Hello everyone, welcome to David Reacts and for today's episode, I'm gonna share with you my first leaderboard for Miss Universe Philippines 2024. So it's not really hard to rank them because I just have two events basing it off of and yeah, take this leaderboard as a grain of salt because this is just two events. Uh, definitely this will change drastically in the next coming weeks especially when uh, the challenges are starting to kick in but for now I feel like it's really important to recognize the people who have done great at least in my eyes in the past couple of appearances and I think that's really important because People start to develop now their fan bases and their following and if we don't discuss some of the girls that you know may have potential maybe people will not be able to see them so yeah strictly this is just from my eyes and my flavor and this is really in my opinion stood out on the last two events press presentation and <clears throat> the official headshots. Let's start. So let's start with number 10. My 10th place would be Kainta. I love her. She's my favorite, sentimental favorite. And she is not originally part of the list because I only have nine, actually. I'm thinking of really inserting one more, but I cannot figure who's I gonna be including on the list. But I figured I just gonna trust my guts because Kainta is really can can improve on and she's very hardworking that I personally know and you know this is coming from a bias thing so possibly this would not be a valid ranking for her but the reason why she's tenth is because I feel like the press presentation weighs more than the headshot. On the headshot she did really well um i would have wished like the headshot was a little bit zoomed in on her face but you know that's just a minuscule critique but on the press presentation like on the motion on the move she's kind of lost like she did absolutely well but in terms of presence in terms of maybe the styling was off with her on that no, she's still gorgeous. She still wore a good dress, but it's not enough to stand out on that official event. And remember, press presentation is the first event of the season, and you want to nail it. And that's an opportunity for Kenta. Um, she's very hype. I know a lot of people rally behind her as well, but on that presentation, I feel like she was left off of the list. Um, at least for me, like if, if you see her differently, then that's your opinion. But for me, at least the press presentation dig a hole in her candidacy, but it's not too late to uh, regain momentum. And I feel like Inta would be able to do that. Next would be Mandawe. Mandawe is the last girl on my list. Um, I have nine official names on the list. Uh, so Mandawe, I kind of brushed through her presentation again. It's, it's energetic. I feel like she's she'd enjoyed her time on the stage. But for me, it's like just amazing to see how she's enjoying it. Although presentation set up in a pageant realm there are opportunities that you know uh, i hope that she can improve on in a short matter of time 
I think the walking is good, but I think we could train it. Styling too, I think we can pay attention more of that. As experience, the next coming challenges will deal greatly on photo shoots and videos. So I hope that she resonates with those challenges and remain her spa at night. But I feel like she's just um, having fun and I really like it. The reason why I put her on the list as well, the face. I feel like the face is the one carrying her. I haven't heard her like speak continuously, but I, I've, I heard that she can, but it, I did not consider that in the racking. Maybe it's just because of the face and the energy that she brought in on that stage, you know? And I hope that she can continue growing in this competition styling is everything because most of them can speak from what i heard so being pretty and beautiful is the key of the game here so yeah but i like her personality she's very very energetic number eight kabanatuan so kabanatuan is one of those girls that i felt um underrated but I understand why. Um, on the press presentation, she seemed so shy. But because of her physique, uh, styling, that long ponytail really suited her. And I think she wore golden green. Uh, she looked spectacular on that press presentation. I think she's one of the gorgeous girls there. Striking, and I hope that she's tall because she looks really tall. She reminded me the face partially of Pia and also Bianca in 2009. So that I think got her into my list. Um, on the specific headshot though, I didn't like it. I think um, the angle was a problem. I think she's really, really pretty and also the volume of the hair. Um, I, I, in the strain on the neck and I think it plays a bit unimportant role in a headshot. Um, I shared there that the three things visually that I'm looking for in a headshot is really the head, the face, the neck, and the shoulder. So yeah, uh, I think the angle really was the downfall for the whole shot but she's still pretty. You cannot deny that. So I Still include her on my list, but regardless of how I feel about the photo shoot, I think what's more important is like the live and in motion. I think she can do really well if she develops more of her confidence and also give us a little more personality. Next would be Bulacan. Bulacan, um, she's one of those women that I saw in. Um, in the press presentation that I was so in awe. Like she's very statuesque and she's really gorgeous. Um, I, I forgot already the comment that I have for the dress. I think as is, when you look at it, it's okay. Like what's great about her is again her face. Same as with Mandawe. I feel like their faces really is one of those uh, the things that we, we thought we never needed, but we needed at this competition. So I really like that. And the way that she ramp, the walk, and also like the presence overall. I think that statuesqueness reminds me of the model, like the image of Miss Universe, like the logo itself. She reminded me of that. Um, the headshot, um, I was sold because of the face and how artistic it is. But I didn't like the whole headshot in a sense like there's no neck and there's no shoulders because personally that's what I'm looking for. Um, this angle worked for her but how would you see her with a neck and a shoulder? That I think would give us a good picture about her uh, which most of the girls have neck and shoulder but didn't meet the expectations so I hope on the next photos, um, we would get at least upper half of her body to to appreciate, you know. And um, but overall, I think the headshot was pretty pretty cool, 
and I like the headshot also I don't like it for the reason personally I'm looking for different things but you cannot deny her face so the reason why I chose her on the seven so up until this point we are like gearing towards like their um potential right the, the things that we see they can improve on and number six on my list is Quezon City. Quezon City is very stunning on the runway, um, not the presentation, and also on the headshot. However, this styling really needs to be better. Mm, she's doing bare minimum at this competition, but even so she's doing bare minimum, she's still great at it. But we don't want to fall short because we feel at ease. Because as her, I mean, as her, like East Kesson City, she can put it off. But I doubt. Um, I hope I'm wrong, but on the next coming leaderboards, she will not be on the list anymore. Because I feel like her styling will not be better in the near future. And we really, we really need it now. Um, I'm kind of guilty placing her above Kabanatuan and above Kainta because even though Kainta has styling opportunities, she did well on the photo shoot, on the headshot. But Quezon City is like on an equal level. But for me, it's more of like putting an effort. She's doing bare minimum without much of an effort. But she's still delivering. So that is my consideration of putting her on top of Keita in Kabanatuan. But for me, for me, I feel like she's gonna fall down on the list. If if the styling doesn't it doesn't improve in the next couple of days. Okay? So yeah. Number six. Okay, so we have gone through our first half very quickly. Kinta, Mandawi, Kabanatu, and Bulacan, and Quezon City. Uh, number five. I never thought she would rank higher on my list, but I feel like she did really well on the headshot. She's one of the best there. Bakoor. And I just noticed, like, when I uploaded the video, I didn't post her picture while I was talking, like, side by side. All of the girls that I talk about, there's a picture on the side, but somehow missed to put hers but anyway Bahar is so gorgeous on the headshot face play I think that's what we needed and I think that's a great factor in this year because all of them are capable all of them are beautiful obviously have the backgrounds have something to tell to people but I think it's now a battle of beauty and styling that's what I'm trying to get what that's what I'm getting in the, the last couple of um, appearances. Um, on the press presentation, I said it was okay. Like, it's a press presentation, press presentation look. I would have wished she'd done something more, a little bit more energy, enthusiasm, but again, that's just her bare minimum, and she delivered. She's still one of those top girls. And imagine if Bakoor would put more effort in the next coming days. Baor is definitely one that I can see surprising everyone to win. Even though she's a front runner because she's a returnee, I feel like before the competition starts, I've been hearing issues about her. Mm, negative, more negative, but when the competition started, the mass in the public starts to develop love for her and that's i think fatal in a competition like this because we don't know if the front runner would win imagine what happened to steffi 2021 and michelle d 2022 right they were really the big favorites but they did win because of the likes of celeste and bea and i think Bako or could do the same thing this year. Hopefully giving us a good fight, but my top two is really like 
it's an end game. But anyway, Bakor, I really like the fact that she did no effort in both presentation and the headshot. And she did amazingly for both accounts. So, yeah. So my five is really like, um, so far, out of the rest, miles away from the ranking. So basically my 10 to 6 were like super in the middle. But these five are, are now at the super top of the list. So yeah, I don't see these five slowing down if, even more. I believe that these five, including Bakoor, would give us a good fight in the next coming weeks. So yeah. Number four, United Kingdom. The ever peculiar look, the girl who always managed to get my attention and really like very striking, ambiguous look. Um, I like her energy in the press presentation and that's the reason why I got intrigued. Like, is this something that we are sure to send if she would win? But I asked myself again, why not? Like she has this aura that i think it's impossible for you to miss in in a competition set up with 80 or 90 girls i think you needed that amazing amazing presence on stage and that million watt smile crazy and on the photo um headshot i feel like she did well but also compared to the other girls it's okay um we just have one miss in the the headshot which was the hair flinging around but that's just it it's just minimal but her face card is really something else and you feel different energy from the presentation and the headshot and that gives you the vulnerability and like the diversity in her personality. And I think if we're gonna play, we play. You know, if we're gonna play, we play the cards really well. And she's doing that. She's giving us different aspects of herself. Especially for those who are really pageant fans would notice differences in different ways. Which both are good like noticeable i think united kingdom can do really well and if she can speak i think she would easily be in the top five although although i have not seen her passerelle you know because i think she wore a dress somehow like a ball gown but not a ball gown so yeah i think um we're gonna see more of that Maybe a downfall could be passerella and the talking and you know the speaking ability, but for now on these two accounts, press presentation and the headshot, United Kingdom killed both, so she's on top of it. Um next would be Bantayan Island. Bantayan Island is really a silent killer for me in the last couple of appearances. Press presentation she was just like swimming through the shore like she was just you know i'm here you can see me um you may not be talking about me but i'm just here that's the energy that, that i am getting from her on the presentation but when it came to the headshot that's when i realized that oops this girl is pretty although although there might be editing involved in there but the way that she positioned her head, the hair, and how subtle her look was, it's not easy to deny. I think she's one of those faces that you would remember even after the pageant. You know what I'm saying? And I said this on my headshot video I posted yesterday. I feel like Bantayan Island, if she didn't make, if she don't make it this year, I feel like Pinipinik Pilipinas would be for her. Um, Miss International, I'm seeing her as Miss International because she's very calm, very soothing. I think that's what we needed for Pinipinik Pilipinas. So, yeah, but anyway, Bantayan Island, full across the board, checked. Um, 
for both accounts and I feel like she's one of their schools one of those girls that we need to watch out for um again this is just basing on the press presentation and the headshot nothing else okay so so far we have named our first eight on the list we have 10 king tap 9 mandawe 8 kamanutuan 7 bulacan 6 kaisang city 5 bakoor 5 united kingdom 3 matayan island and before i discuss my second and my top contender for this leaderboard I want to preface that um, this is the hardest leaderboard that I got to do in my first leaderboard in history of my self-reacting to pageants just because I feel like they offer differently and they both amazing but at the same time you can't determine who's lesser than the other so I want to put it this way like essentially they're tied their number one spot but for the sake of a leaderboard we should have number two my number two is Iloilo City so for the things that I've said earlier I think she across the board check all the marks I think we are so excited for her to tackle all of the returnees the legends and also the bubbling up and the newbies but so far, Ilo Ilo City is killing it. The headshot was amazing. Spectacular, perfect, magnificent. Any adjective that you may throw at her, she deserves it. And being beautiful is just an understatement for her. I think I feel the energy. I feel the answer. I feel the fighting spirit. And most importantly, I feel like the Miss Universe energy. That's, I think one reason why i really like her because the way that she presented herself on the press presentation it's very commanding although she's a newbie that is something else like even the returnees and like the legends there like for sure they're keeping an eye out for in the city because that performance and the presentation is unheard of for a newbie Sometimes you see a newbie and I'm like, mm, yeah, she can improve on that. But Ilo Ilo is well packaged. And we have not seen anything yet. <laughs> so, yeah, this is just short and simple. I know you already know what we are seeing publicly with Ilo Ilo City. And I think I can agree with the hype. I am with the hype. I'm gonna roll it through that boat, through that river of cloud. Il Ilo City is someone to look forward to in this competition. And if she would win, no surprise at all, but I'll be so much happy for her. She, she's a newbie, and for her to have this ability is something else. In contrast, here's my number one, Quezon Province. You may have already guessed. Um, same as um, Ilo Ilo City, she has what it takes, she has the face, she has the values, and she has a fighting spirit. Um, what I, what she have over Ilo Ilo City is for both presentation and the headshot is really the feel of security. Security in a sense like no matter what happens, it will be me. Cause in Ilo Ilo City, you would still say, you would still say, hopefully she wins, right? But when in Quezon Province, when you see her on both presentation and the headshot, you would say most of us, she's gonna win. So I think that's the difference. The way that she evolved and she represented herself differently to this competition, looking back at her Bini Bini team, totally different person. If if I don't know Kesson Province, I would say if I knew her as an UB, I would believe that because I don't know Kesson Province right now. Who's that girl? I don't know that amazing shift in personality and also like 
the way that you package yourself on the presentation is the most important for me. Like, she did that. And I think where your emotion is different, especially when you're on screen. Of course, there were people there who saw a lot of candidates. And obviously, all of the candidates may look differently in person. The reason why I'm so like kind of slightly upset with Quezon City because when I saw her, she's very much stunning in person and it's not translating on screen. But for sure, they have seen a Quezon province face to face and they cannot deny the energy. And what I like was really that coming across, coming out of the screen while I was watching it. And it's really hard to do. Same as with Ilo Ilo. Don't get me wrong, I think, just like I said, um, the reason why I put Quezon Province on my list, at least in my opinion, is a question like the winnability. When I look at Ilo Ilo City, my question will be, she's really doing great. I hope she wins. But in Quezon Province, while wow, she's really doing great, she would win. That's the difference. Um, and I'm very excited with the next coming challenges because for sure, like, we gonna separate these girls and there will be people coming up of the list. And for sure, some of these girls will be falling up short of the expectations. Kinda expected because this is the first ever leaderboard for 2024. So, to wrap it up, for my first and second, I don't want to see it as like one is lesser than the other. Um, it's really hard to choose which one really because they're both on their A game. And I think so far at this early in the stage of the competition, I would say anyone, any, both of them can win. But the question is, will they win Miss Universe? So that I think would surpass the judging like because that's the future question we don't know if they would win miss universe philippines more so we don't know if they're gonna win miss universe but i think it's a interesting thought and it's a question to ask when we are going through these leaderboards yes we favor some contestants yes we put them on the list but we do we truly believe that they would win this universe i think that's the question um, yeah, so far, just to recap, my 10th would be Kainta, 9th Mandawi, 8th Kabanatuan, 7th Bulacan, 6th Quezon City, 5th Bacoor, 4th United Kingdom, 3th Bantayan Island, 2 Ilo Iloilo City, and my number 1 is Quezon Province. So, that's just it. I hope I explain it concise and relatable for everyone. Um, again, this is just by my opinion, there are other leaderboards out there you believe what you want to believe and also you can create your own i mean this is one of those things that i really like about pageantry is when you predict and you get it wrong <laughs> so yeah but for me like essentially like my five is some that are those people that i am watching and looking forward to on this competition um yeah but hopefully some of the girls that are not on my list would pull it off for the next challenges. So if you don't know, um, whenever I do videos and like episodes, I will not be discussing the whole girls. I'll just be discussing the people who I believe caught my attention and really needs exposure. And I think this 10 deserves their places. But obviously, in the next coming days, it will change. Definitely it will change. Um, and I'm really excited on what's gonna happen on the list. So if you have any kind of like subscribe, let me know who's your number one or give me at least top five for now. And let's discuss in the comment section if you'd like that. So again, I'll be live every Monday, 12 a.m. So that's Sunday coming Monday to discuss a lot of things um, just for an hour. And yeah, that's it. See you around.